Uh, all right, I was only half joking about that napping thing. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, we got the music. We're doing the intro. We're doing it. We're doing it. Let's do it. Or not. There should just there should just be a button for the music. Why is there no music? No, Brian's 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 had like computer issues. Like, it, like I don't even know if Brian's here anymore. You know, whenever he says, "Oh, we're live," and then he just disappears, it's <laughs> something bad has happened. Like there was a meltdown with Ryan in the streams. So, hmm. so I, I don't know. I don't know if we're streaming yet or not because we've lost Ryan. So. I feel like I've lost my water rings. <laughs> We've lost all of our support. Like. But we got Rob here. Hey, Rob. We don't have Rob either. Now I'm drowning. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I, this whole I thing even... seemed like a good idea. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. I mean, uh, we could start in with the stories, but I want to know if we're online or not. Um, I think we are live. I think that I, looks like the YouTube. Oh, yeah, we're live. All let's right. So we are let's live, so let's just go ahead and let's get into it. Um, so hopefully we get Rob. Is it Friday yet? No, Dusty. It is not. <laughs> All right, Ralph, let's lead us off. You got the stories. Today, so let's do let's do your story. First. We're talking about you were talking about GitHub how they're removing POC code, because that's not incendiary at all. Oh, yeah. So for everyone who doesn't know, uh, some POC code for the exchange vulnerabilities, um, or when I say vulnerability, it is a bunch, right? It's like four, I believe, uh, was posted mm -hmm. on GitHub. And GitHub decided to remove the POC. And, um, you know, kind of the back and forth about that. So they immediately took it down. Uh, obviously, this was security researcher code. Uh, it was, you know, meant that this is not uncommon. After a vulnerability is patched and publicly known about uh, for vulnerability researchers to publish uh, POC or, or uh, proof of concept code, and they did on this particular uh, vulnerability. And Microsoft, I'm going to use air quotes, Microsoft dash GitHub, um, removed the code really quick. And so, kind of the blowback with all of that. Uh, especially considering the fact that GitHub is owned by Microsoft and Microsoft's product or Exchange was the one being affected here. So uh, what do you guys think? So the first thing is the, the story that's up on the stream right now is not this story. Um, it's, <laughs> actually, it's actually Critics, Critics Fume after GitHub. And there we go. It's Critics Fume one. Yep. We'll bring that up here in just a couple of seconds. There we go. Um, so, all right. So this actually led to a conversation in my class last week. And one of my students said, uh, he just typed in, Mark Rosanovich never got in trouble for releasing PS. And I've decided that that's now a t-shirt for BHIS um, because it says, <laughs> Mark Rosanovich never got in trouble for releasing PS exec, you know, even though it is one of the most heavily used post exploitation tools out there and then on the back it's going to say but he felt bad so we released this man um i, I think that this is <laughs> I, I personally think that this is ridiculous um and, and the reason why i think it's ridiculous and this isn't just this one issue right this is a much larger issue than just this proof of concept code. it gets into this whole conversation about Okay, so security researchers releasing tools, releasing backdoors, releasing these things on GitHub. We need to stop that because that's really the problem. I think the issue for that is that's the whipping like the whipping boy that you can see, right? So you can actually say, okay, so this clearly is a problem. So we're going to blame Marcello. We're going to blame all these people that are releasing malware. They're releasing backdoors. They're releasing proof of a concept exploit code. We're going to shut that down. But that isn't actually fixing the problem. I don't think because those issues still exist. You're just attacking like the most like obvious manifestation of it. And personally, whenever it comes to malware, when it comes to code for remote ex code execution, I want my malware publicly disclosed on GitHub with full comments so people can signatures for it. Um, so that's that's my take. And I know, uh, Derek, you've thought you might have a different approach on this as well. So 
I agree with you a hundred percent in concept and in I general feel like terms. There's a there's butt coming. There's a butt. Yeah, there's a big butt yeah, coming. There's a butt coming. <laughs> because you know, I've seen like the the Twitter rants, and I've seen you know folks on you know both sides, and you know, I definitely agree that you know security tools should be released, and that you know malware authors and the security researchers, you know malware authors that are researchers, I definitely agree it should be out. But I think in this particular instance. Um, I don't disagree with what Microsoft did. And the reason why is because you could view this as kind of like an ongoing global incident and that they were attempting to try and, you know, the containment phase of an incident to try and not make it, to make it just a little bit harder for more people to be taking advantage of of this specific issue especially since how you know how widespread this re really was so i'm not saying that it's you know i mean it's one of those things where there's probably no no but good choice in the, their eyes so but wasn't the wasn't the like patch already released though the oh patch is already sure. released yeah. But yeah. I mean, if you're, you know, running some kind of internet facing complex exchange environment with, you know, 29 exchange servers clustered together, I mean, how, like, how quickly do you patch, right? Like, or, I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is I think the code should definitely be out on GitHub once the everyone has had time to kind of remediate the issue. And I know it's probably surprising that you, you think I would take that, that stance. Nope. So I, 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 I think in this particular case, especially since it's, you can look at it as like, you know, kind of like fallout from quote cyber war, right? I mean, there are nation states, the nation state who's, you know, doing this thing, they have their own code and then somebody puts out a, uh, you know, a proof of concept and now there's, you know, more coming. I, I guess I don't disagree with this one particular thing, but I do agree with your con with the concept of that tool should definitely be uh, available open source. And because if, if, if researchers, if there aren't, if there aren't tools for red teamers to use that are, are public and available, then they're just going to write their own and then it'll be harder to detect in the long run, I believe. But I have the other side opinion of this. So like we, ca it, it's not that I disagree per se with the, kind of this idea that it makes things worse because it possibly does, but I think it's for the better good. And then additionally, it's kind of like, where do you draw the line? Like, when is it okay oh, to release so the code? Like, is it I, exact day yeah. amount? Is it so, like, you know, is it a feeling that I personally have? Like we have to yeah. like kind of, articulate that oh, and I that's mean, the responsible disclosure process right yeah i, I, I don't call it you. that please don't call it that <laughs> I, oh, oh, he's here. Here. He talks. <laughs> oh. i know he's been listening the whole time so now he's yeah. just code up so what are your problems oh i'm just doing i'm doing t-ball with mubix <laughs> mubix what do, what do you mean it's like you might have a problem with the phrase responsible disclosure do tell okay. No, no, we're not going to go into that. No, uh, I'll, I'll t I will talk. Um, my my mindset on this did change. So um, when Dave Kennedy actually posted um, uh, the hate about GitHub pulling it off, um, I was right on board with him. And after reading some of the comments and some of the posts, I, I thought about it a lot more. And um, I'm kind of so there's there's a lot of pieces to this one. Um, the notoriety of of publishing first is is definitely something that that people have to that's take into account. Problem. And, like, well, I, but uh, I think that that's I mean, a problem in the industry. I do think. That okay, we'll come back to that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, so like having the notoriety of it puts you like it's resume building, right? So there's that, and I, I'm not going to discount anyone for like trying to succeed in their life, right? Um, I think that it's bad that that's part of it, but. Uh, anyways, so there's there's that piece. There's also the piece of, um, the like Derek said, um, lots of people are still getting uh, exploited at this. It was a uh, nation state actor, so it's sort of you know like, uh, for example, if like a uh, a place got hit with a freaking nuclear bomb, you don't go and start robbing people like or showing how how to build smaller bombs right after a nuclear bomb hit, right? Like it's just mean, right? Um, so 
there's the the piece that it's still being exploited um but i would like to take a a, a stance on this that is sort of like um sort of different um where i think that the the code should be released just like ralph and and you guys were talking about um but i think we should think of it in the same sense of um uh project zero uh project zero day um does where they do the 90 days this has not been 90 days since a patch right um now mm. yeah, but project the, zero day when they're 90 uh, just a step in project zero day in their 90 day disclosure it's whether there is a patch or not to improve the security of that infrastructure sure 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 so i'm i'm, I'm sorry bad analogy because i'm just taking the 90 days out of it <laughs> it's, it's okay just um, to, <laughs> all right go ahead yep um so i think that something this widespread should get 90 days before something gets published like um the the ability for organizations to patch just like derek was saying is tough right especially in exchange it's not not easy plus you have mom and pop shops you have places that are foreign countries that might not have read the latest you know security news in english and like that's a that's a huge deficit that we have in infosec is like um the translation to and google translate mm -hmm. and all that stuff doesn't really work very well if all i read is russian or polish or or other non um uh uh, uh stupid english? uh yeah other non non-english languages not non um yeah. latin languages right um and so i think that that 90 days is a, an okay time frame to say okay the patch has been out for 90 days we're going to start releasing that and actually um like the code was published to metasploit as well and Rapid Seven had a, a long discussion on on leaving it up or not. Like this, but this. What did is, they decide? Just diversity. Um, they the, the ultimate decision was to leave it up since there was code everywhere else. The other, the the final piece, the third piece that I'll talk to about this is that removing stuff like this pushes the code into further down into the dark web or the yeah. the the. the bad people area somebody right? was going to release this like if you say no. if like we all agree to not do it some somebody will somebody's still going to release it like three sure weeks, right but what i'm saying is what i'm saying is like once it's there it's out right mm -hmm. like nothing gets deleted from the internet the removal of it pushed it into the dark areas like now it's going to be traded because the uh what's the economics like the the need for it the want for it is now increased you, you, it's because the of the scarcity it's the streisand effect also right you right. know by microsoft polling this and they're like Whoa, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take this away from people it just amplified it that much more and the yeah. people that had it so you know like i i probably wouldn't have even found it on github if i if i <laughs> you know if it hadn't been you know pulled right i i probably wouldn't have looked for it um yeah i, I know because yeah, there's other... go ahead i was just gonna say i know other guys who are on teams who have seen exchange on their current engagement and they were looking for it they're looking for the poc so they could use it right um yeah. you know on yeah. that assessment and i mean whether that's i mean it's it's an assessment right so it's it's patch management we get it it's not necessarily a zero day at this point it's just hey you didn't patch it i got it in time so great um but uh, yeah, I mean, people were looking for it. I, I kind of, I, I kind of agree with you. Like it, the, the better good of kind of like this, like you know, should we as a as a um, uh, as researchers should we publish this? But at the end of the day, if he didn't do it, somebody was going to do it right before him. Uh, that's kind of like this. Okay, well then we wait for that one malicious person to do it. I, I don't know. It's it, there's no easy answer here. And once it's out, it is out, man. Well, and like. Sure. See, the internet's a big pool, and once you're yeah. in the pool, you can't unbe in the pool. Like, I mean, so absolutely. I, I, I guess my point is... So I don't we think, need more chlorine. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think that Microsoft thought, or GitHub thought, that, um, oh, if we get rid of, of GitHub, it'll solve all the issues. I think It's going to solve everything. Yeah, I don't think I think that, they thought I mean, it was going to slow it down. That slow, they were exactly. I think that, that they would slow it down a little bit, because I think, I mean, they're panicking, because... You know, it, it just it, it's just 
makes it harder and harder for them to contain what's happening or help contain what's happening because it's not just i mean we're talking about like government organizations and like places that i don't know i i think like i said on this particular here's, one i don't disagree here's my one follow-on question for everyone here so we we kind of all have different opinions about whether or when it should have been taken down but um my, one thing I also want to ask is, do you guys think if it was like something like an Oracle vulnerability, it would have been taken down as well? Well, Dusty, Dusty is bringing up a point. Dusty yeah. Miller on the chat is saying, um, so far they, ha they haven't taken down the F5 stuff that was yeah. posted two days ago. So there, oh, there's no. clearly <laughs> some type of double standard, there, yeah. right? Well, the, absolutely. The proof of concept is still available two days that are not removed, shows that they only care about their stuff. What I want to say, in all fairness, is Microsoft's prerogative, right? Yeah. You know, absolutely. That, it's but, their platform. Yeah. So, so yeah, it could have no, been in. Yeah. It could have been internal politics. You know, GitHub yeah. is new to Microsoft. It could sure. just be exec saying, "We want to look good. We we don't." Want oh, absolutely. Either. Yeah, or it right. Could have been a, a, a decision made without, like, you know, really discussing it at higher levels and what, like, the impact would be, and like, or should we do it or not? I mean, because if, if it landed on somebody who had the authority to make that decision and they did it, I mean, these are huge organizations with lots of people and lots of moving parts, right? So, so or lower levels. Yeah, Can yeah. You, or I lower mean, levels. it could it could have been just a a person who's you know. A help desk person who says, "Okay, this is bad. I'm going to delete it because I see bad stuff about it in the news." Right? Like it yeah. could have been mm -hmm. any level. We just don't know. Well, the, I mean, yeah. I guess it was at, at some. There's probably some management involvement because Microsoft had a statement, right? And I, I read it, and I don't remember the oh, okay. was something like along the lines of like, "Hey, we realize that people are going to be upset that the, that the researchers want." this code but at this point in time we're going to have to take it down it was something along those lines so i think there was deliberation at some level right but okay I don't so, know. I, yeah. so so here's so here's a here's a take and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna paraphrase horribly uh a simple nomad um who is an exploit <laughs> developer from way back in the day um whenever you're looking at like closure right um, you're talking about full disclosure, you're talking about coordinated disclosure, you're talking about responsible disclosure, wh whatever the hell you want to call it. And this kind of springboards off of what, uh, what Rob said. Whenever these things go out, they're out, right? Like, you know, if, if you're going to beat up the security researcher or you're going to try to hunt down the evil quote unquote hackers that are running the code online or they have it, it's freaking out. And with these abilities, you honestly have two choices, right? And in the security community, you have two choices. Either A, security community is running completely transparently and they're sharing information directly with the community and they're getting things out there. Or they're going to be sharing it with their friends. And there's you're going to have situations where a lot of security researchers are going in the dark because of the, the reputation associated with being a security researcher may not be so stellar moving forward. So... I used to disagree with the concept of full disclosure because the old school definition of full disclosure, what you're literally just going to release everything and let the pieces fall where they may. And I disagreed with that. It was like, no, 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 we got to watch for the impact. We got to do this. But anytime you're talking about nuance, whenever it comes to disclosure, you start discussing responsible disclosure or coordinated disclosure. It ultimately arcs very heavily over towards the vendor having total control of the disclosure process. And it creates a situation where it's possible, if you look at like Oracle in the past, where the security researchers get demonized very heavily if they're trying to work within a responsible disclosure framework, which vendors believe is don't ever disclose anything unless we you signed a non-disclosure agreement, which means you're never going to release it publicly. Then you start having this like a number of years ago, Dina DeZovi came up with uh, a number of other researchers with the Three Bugs movement, which was basically like, we're sick and tired of finding vulnerabilities in software and not getting reimbursed for it. And uh, we're not going to release these things unless we actually get some type of compensation. So there's this pendulum that's constantly going back and forth in the community about whether or not we're going to disclose this way or we're going to disclose this way. But if we go back to Simple Nomad's premise, disclosure is freaking happening. 
And all the rest of this just becomes theater as whether or not people feel good about this GitHub page being shut down. The code was out there. It hit GitHub. People already had it. It was already spreading. So it's almost whenever you're looking at full disclosure, you're almost dealing with reality of the situation and saying, look, this is the type of agency that we need with these security vulnerabilities, whether or not it's on GitHub or not, be damned. It's boiling it back down to the reality of the situation is the code has been released. It's out there. You have to deal with it one way or the other. Now, the cool thing about this is it brought the whole like awareness of this thing much, 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 much higher. Microsoft stepping in, removing it uh, from GitHub, started a huge tweet storm. And the cool side effect was immediately a lot of companies were like, what the hell is on Twitter? What's this? Dave Kennedy's <laughs> tweeting? What? Something's with Exchange. It actually increased that awareness very, 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 very well. So it, it's difficult talking about these issues. Now my take is kind of leaning towards kind of simple nomad. It's like, if, let's, if we step back and we acknowledge the reality, once this stuff hits, it's out there. I think that that's much healthier than us kind of patting each other on the back and saying, we're waiting 90 days for this proof of concept. Because as soon as the CVE and they're like, there's a vulnerability here, every security researcher, white hat or black hat, is immediately researching and they will uncover it very quickly. So that was a long winded thing, but it's me getting old and crotchety, I think. <laughs> um, you want to move to the next one? Yeah, we can. I mean, I, I like that one. I, I think that... That uh, wasn't a very good segue. You got to work on your segues, Ralph. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. That, that, that was a really crap. Hey, segue. should we do the Google releases Spectre proof of concept? Speaking of companies releasing proof of concept. Oh, please. Code. Please, please. Sure. That's fantastic. Let's continue with this one. Um, so for those of you that don't know, there's a whole class of vulnerabilities. Um, Spectre and Meltdown was probably the, some of the first ones that came out. Um, and the whole class of vulnerabilities is around something called spin up execution. So in your CPU, uh, whenever it does a redundant task over and over and over and over, and, um, it actually kind of pre-processes some of those possible outcomes, and then basically it throws away the answers that it doesn't necessarily need. So one of the things you can do in security is you basically queue up where it's basically reading into the future, trying to predict things like passwords, for example. And then whenever you give a different password, what was happening with CPU architectures is a lot of that data that was in the speculative execution actually was still available and you could reach in and you could actually pull things like passwords out. Um, so this was in the realm of academia for a long, long, long time. And this particular article is where Google has released a uh, speculative execution proof of concept code where you can actually run it within your browser. And it allows you to actually pull data off of a system at like, I think it's like 1K per second. So it's not like super, super, super fast, but it at least highlights how this particular attack can be launched, not in academic circles, but straight up for realsies. And they also talk about how this is a vulnerability that exists beyond just Chrome, how this particular vulnerability exists in a large number of additional browsers. So this is interesting because it does kind of springboard off of what we just talked about um, with speculative execution and some of the vulnerabilities that exist. Um, is this the same thing um, or is this just a continuation of the academic research and speculative execution? I mean, is Spectre being executed in the wild with thousands of unpatched machines over the internet being exposed? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, this kind of shows that it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, that's a legitimate question. That was not meant to be like theater, really. It's like, but it, I will say this. I will, I will answer it legitimately. This is one step further towards that class of exploits being at a issue where they absolutely could be yeah, exploited yeah. in the wild. I think it's going that route, right? Because, you know, I just kind of read quickly while you were talking that it even works with some modification on Apple's M1 ARM CPU. So I guess the whole concept of speculative execution and, you know, is probably the technology itself probably just has an issue that can be take, you know, taken advantage of, right? So maybe this is, you know, uh, you know, companies like, you know, I mean, I, you remember the whole like you never need more than one mega RAM. Is that what Bill Gates said back in the day? I mean, I guess we've kind of gotten to this point where like everything is it just demands so much. So it's so bright, shiny and pretty that everybody wants to use it. Right. And so maybe that was a bad route to go. I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, the, the thing that does kind of suck about this particularly is that the only way to patch this, right, quote, unquote, is to um, get a new processor, right? Like, you just, you need a new platform. Oh, so. no, no, no. Uh, no. You, you, Remember, just... they did. They, no, 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 no. That's not true. Um, you, you, they can do some patches, but the actual issue is actually embedded far further into the actual CPU picture. Um, but yes, there were actual patches. If you remember, uh, there were patches that Microsoft put out and sure. it actually did impact the performance oh, by yeah, like 20%, 20, 25%. On some yeah, of their, yeah, I remember some going, holy so, crap, my machine is so much slower yeah, so, now. Hold, hold on. So yes, they are, there are some, uh, remediation efforts, like, you know, things you could do to prevent it, but not entirely. Right. And so that new variants of this could come out in addition, like what you brought up, those, yeah, patches, right, severely affected performance in systems that are already overtaxed, right? I mean, especially in virtualization environments mm -hmm. when 100% CPU utilization oh, is what you want, not 80 of that, yeah. right? So, but You're I mean- You're paying for it, might as well use it, right? Yeah, yeah. so I mean, it definitely is like much, the patch in many uh, articles was maybe worse than the vulnerability, right? Because there are a lot of things related to where you need to be to actually exploit this vulnerability. And it's not just something that you hit up over the internet, right on an open port. So um, yeah. yeah. In addition, I do believe that AMD has is releasing, and I'm sure my uh, Intel as well, new chips that are supposedly more more hardened against this resilient. kind of attack yeah and in addition uh resilient against other kinds of micro architecture attacks that affect virtualization environments very very specifically right where this would be yeah. the most uh hazardous to your operations right like being able to spread from one virtual machine to another is really what you're worried about in this particular example so yeah even data leakage across those is is really really hella bad um but a lot of what i've been reading too and i, I don't want to be a naysayer but a lot of what i'm reading is it, it's it's more difficult right it's making things more these types of attacks, but it's not going to shut them down completely. Um, it's kind of like whenever you had uh, data execution prevention, when you're looking at buffer overflow and heap overflow vulnerabilities, um, you came out with DEP and there was hardware-based data execution and then there was uh, execution prevention that was put in the operating system as well. That actually made it somewhat more difficult for actual exploitation. Um, but it didn't actually shut things down. And then you started developing canaries to protect the return pointer. and then you had different types of canaries that could actually be utilized, uh, like Terminator canary X or canary randomized canaries, um, and you could protect it. And there was ways to bypass that um, where you could actually do uh, ROP chains and things of that nature. My, my point of all of this is what you're going to see is you're going to see these speculative execution attacks. There's going to be these protections that are going to be started to put in place, and they're not going to completely address the core issue for a long time. It's not just yeah. going to be like, oh, this is now fixed. Because if you look at something as simple as a bar overflow and eventually Hebo attacks, it took probably 15, 17 years to the point where it is now, where it's actually really freaking hard to actually exploit those particular vulnerabilities in modern operating systems. So it's gonna take time and I think I think a lot of that has to do with I don't believe Unity as a whole, especially the people that are creating the the architectures, understand the the vulnerability class as well as they should. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's definitely a big issue, and I think to your point, we're going to see it more in the future because uh, again, Intel didn't recognize the class mm. of vulnerability, right? Um, well, in AMD, remember when it first came out, they're like, oh, we're not Intel, we're good. They, oh. were, they were totally yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> They were just lying to themselves because it just hadn't made it to them yet, right? Yeah, but, good, we're good. <laughs> but uh, so, on the top, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was actually going to segue because the on the topic of zero days, we have a recent 11 zero days attacking Windows, iOS, and Android users all at one time. Expert hacker used 11 zero days. So that's our next story. So yeah, go ahead, Ron. Can I, can I uh, talk on this one for a second? Yeah, hit it. So so this uh, this specific PLC is in JavaScript, right? So the best um, language. So the, the, I don't know enough about Spectre and Melton, and I really have to uh, dig in a little further. But to my knowledge, uh, this only was able to read uh, memory of other processes in the same um, space as the mm -hmm. browser. So Chrome, 
another That's tab true. you could read firefox you could read another tab or another mm -hmm. window chrome you could read another window but nothing outside of that because of the protections at least in windows um i don't know about linux uh how it does segmentation of memory but um the the protections there were in place where basically all you could do um with this attack is read you know logins and which is still you know bad Good um stuff. but you could um the the protections they they put in place i i Basically, what they're saying from Google's point of view is you should have it so that every um, every one of your server's web applications should have cross-origin uh, corp uh, co-op um, cores, all of the C cross-origin and better policies, all of that cr head all header stuff, so that um, attackers can't load JavaScript into your page and execute this on on your page. But like, mm -hmm. all it takes is all it takes is a attacker to get you to surf to that their page and you're mm -hmm. still getting exploited right so yes. isn't it isn't it just on the browsers to patch like i don't like <clears throat> their mitigations i don't quite understand i guess because they're saying they're putting this on on web servers to mitigate this and and at some point like cross site scripting's a thing right so i don't understand how i understand how these protections help but I don't. I think that patching your browsers is a more important protection on this. I think it's absolutely one of those things where you need both, right? Um, you absolutely need to have both. So that's. I would agree that that's number one. Number two, I almost think that, and I'm speculating right now. Ha! It's a pun. Um, I'm speculating on this right now, but I. I I believe, and I can definitely be wrong. Proof of concept code is somewhat neutered. That you know, if you look at speculative execution attacks, where that's happening, that's happening at such a low level that it's below any type of sandboxing that's being done by the operating system. So it, that that seems curious to me that it is just happening within the browser. But I can almost see Google setting it up so it's restrictive to just that. Um, but at the end of the day, I agree with you. I, I think it's a bit weird just on servers and on, on people developing servers. I think that there absolutely should be some better protections in the browsers as well. So I tested their code in, in the latest versions of Firefox and, and Chrome and Edge and IE, and all of them didn't uh, result in any of uh, the POC working. So, uh, yeah. I'm, so patch your stuff. Um, yep. And, All right. And, yeah. Patch the things that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Is it everything, right? A no. Every time your browser says patch, just do it immediately. Don't think about it. Just do it. All your tabs gone, but do it. <laughs> There's ways to save tabs. No, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, don't make me lose, have a heart attack. Like, I, I want my tabs back. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, my God. Could you imagine? Uh, the whole 400 tabs gone. Gone, dude. Oh, That's like, I, I have 1,100 tabs. Uh, <laughs> I was kidding, but I think I'm, you're not. <laughs> I'm not kidding at all. I have a, I can, a 1,400 or 1,400 and and one tabs. God bless and you, your RAM. And you can go to bed all red and closed. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so we've got this expert hacker. You want to tell us a little bit about this story? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so essentially a advanced uh, hackers exploited no more than 11 zero day vulnerabilities in a nine month campaign. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, I think this comes out from project zero as well, if I'm not mistaken. And it's ridiculous uh, how like many varying exploits they were using and all different kinds of like um, uh, attack paths. It, you know, this is not like someone who's good at developing. You know, one exploit wrote these. This is a gang of exploits, all being used at one time. Uh, you know, to cause uh, success in this attack. I mean, it was um, Chrome, Windows Heat Buffer Overflow, uh, two more Chrome, Safari, and iOS. Right. This is a wide gambit of uh, zero day yeah, exploits. You're yeah. talking three three nation states can yeah. do this. My, yeah, yeah. My first thought is, holy shit, this is expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Like somebody paid 
to buy these, okay? And this goes back to this marketplace, right? Wouldn't it be better if this was all on GitHub and we could have just all known about it? But no. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> way to tie that together. Um, but anyways, it's 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 wild to see this. And uh, in addition, yeah, it's brutal. Being 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 like you know flippant. I want somebody to say why why would why we didn't find these vulnerabilities because the researchers didn't post it on GitHub. Um, oh, kind of I know, flipping right? to descend I mean, on a little bit. It's like we we can't detect things unless GitHub here, folks. But so, this is insane. Like this is this is nuts. I don't th I can't think of anything. That we've yes, seen well. this many zero days change. Well, the closest thing would have been Stuxnet, um, which I think yeah. had four, 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 four yeah. separate zero days. Four, four um, the shortcut, two, the keyboard layout, yeah. scheduled task abuse, and I can't remember what the other one was. Yeah, and then um, two stolen uh, uh, signing certificates. Um, yeah, from Micron and Railtech. But like this so one, it's almost like whoever saw that was like, hold my beer here we go yeah, right. <laughs> i mean so. the kinds of things that you you would use on like i'm with you like this nation state level stuff i mean because how, how many ios uh, security research do re researchers do you personally know i knew one right and you know i just how many do you know that discovered zero days in uh, ios know. yeah i mean like i don't know any yeah, right yeah <laughs> I mean, but i guess this is a skill Yet there's set. three in, in not just day. an ios zero day it's three yeah this is i mean and this they is skill set that is just it's like you know there are a handful of people in the world that can do this kind of stuff as far as i know right i mean maybe there's thousands and i just don't know right but i i guess yeah, I mean, it, it almost reads to me like, uh, you know, like, here, if you're not terrified yet and want to go live in a cave, here, read this, right? Somebody yeah. went down to the old zero-day shop and, and bought them home. a whole bunch of things. I mean, let's just say that they were half a million dollars a piece or a million dollars a piece or whatever. I mean, to use those then, I mean, wouldn't it be, like, highly targeted? I mean, it's not like you're going to yeah, launch yeah. ransomware with this stuff, right? So, man... It, it was I mean, going on for supposedly, uh, according to the research, I think it said like nine months. And one of those chain fully compromised a fully patched Windows 10 using Google Chrome. So if you could get someone to visit a website, that chain could get the whole box, man. So that's, that's terrifying, right? Like, I mean, that, those aren't... <laughs> Come on. But let's be honest, you're a little excited. Right, yeah. just a little yeah. bit. Come <laughs> on. I, absolutely. I wish I was even half that talented to be able to figure something like that out. Like that's that's crazy. Um, but I mean, I think really, yeah, Windows 10. But I, I, the mobile ones are like the scary ones to me. Because, the, yeah, those are the harder ones. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, those are the harder ones. And then like it's still even like in the pen test world, like we very very rarely even touch on like the mobile surface area just because of you know we can't you know be why and authorization and stuff like that. And I just think a lot of people really ignore it. I mean, a lot of companies really ignore that attack vector. And it's just, I think that we're, we're doing kind of a disservice, like, you know, because I think, you know, the Windows sphere, these, uh, these exploits aside, right, these zero days aside, you know, has gotten a lot better. But I just, I don't know, I feel like there's a big chunk of computing in the security world, this is kind of ignored to a I, degree. But but I also like you know part of me any time I right any time I see something like this, I just envision a meeting. Let's just say it was the NSA because oh probably it was the NSA. Um, it, it, <laughs> so they're sitting around and like one guy gets up and he's like, "Okay, Jim, tell us about what you did." Right. In order to get in, um, so what I did first is I wrote an, an exploit for iOS on on Safari. Um, <laughs> remote code execution. And then I had to escape from the kernel. Um, but I, I, I got out of the kernel once and I realized I had to get out of the kernel a second time. So I ended up writing a second kernel zero day to, to get in. Good job, Jim. Good job. Anybody else? And the ASOC, the intern's like, I got in. How did you get in, ASOC? And he's like, they used a password of spring 2020. And you can hear the exploit guy go, <laughs> God damn it. So, <laughs> absolutely. So, so, so I so think, what, uh, I tried the password and then I went to lunch at the crab <laughs> shack at GNW. Um, so. I think uh, so. One of the uh, exploits was an RCE for iOS 11 through 13, right? And privilege escalate yeah. uh, and privilege escalation exploit for uh, for iOS 13. By the way, Zeronium pay is charging or pays. Excuse me. They will pay half a million dollars for an RCE for iOS, right? So somebody sold this somebody got it <laughs> like and that was at least a half a million dollars so 
And that know. gets into an interesting question about how many of these exploits on the nation state level are written by the government. And by the government, I mean government and subcontractors, like bringing in, you know, oh, man yeah. tech and they're helping, they're helping write these things. That would still be on, on the government. How many of them are on open, open public markets and the government's going in with their shopping cart and buying these? I think when you're looking at these, <laughs> these are developed by the nation state for the state. Yeah, so. I mean, this is one definite example when somebody says it could have been a very advanced threat actor. It was an advanced right. threat actor. Right. It, There's no doubt in my mind. Could. Like this is yeah. this is so, the one. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear, well, we, 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 we found the guy who wrote these, and it turns out he's an idiot. He doesn't even know how to use a computer. <laughs> It was told by freaking mistake. He gave his infant son an iPod and he or an iPhone, and he literally drew on it and found it. It's the damnedest thing. This was not Solar Winds one two three. Okay, this was no. This was not Solar Winds one two three. So, so I got a question. Uh, um, for, first, yeah. um, it's Maddie Stone that is the researcher for this, and she's amazing, and that's awesome that she has big this published in credit it, but... to her. Yeah, she. If you're not following her on Twitter, you should, because she basically, yeah, does amazing things with Android, um, and obviously, um, uh, lots of other things. She, anyways. Um, the second thing is, um, it doesn't talk about what the end goal was. This was a watering hole attack where you would well, hit the the page and it would exploit you, um, but like, there's not much after that so cool i was i was exploited but then what like so i think what's that's the goal? two things like either a no one knows then it's they would just speculate or b uh we don't have the clearance level to know <laughs> yeah so, I, I think i think it's b and like how they have like little question marks where they're drawing little exploit chains together and they get to the end it's like question mark question mark we don't know what this was for, but it was bad. Okay, guys? And, and there could be two us. reasons. Yeah, they, they might literally not know. Like, they have zero idea. They, they don't know or they can't draw the association. They saw these remnants of these exploits, put the pieces together, which is amazing by itself. But we yeah. don't know what the, what the point was, okay? Or two, they just can't talk about it for whatever reason. So um, maybe a mix of both. Are you almost done? So... <laughs> yeah, they're almost done. They're almost done. They're almost done. So, on that just note, two minutes. Just two minutes. Two more, two more minutes. All right. Um, I, I think there must be some hungry kids or something like that. They they occasionally yeah. need to be fed and watered. <laughs> they need to be fed and watered. <laughs> well, you just throw pizza at them. Here's the credit card. Go buy a pizza. Or <laughs> Oh, oh! I have forgotten everything. I was. Gonna say. I know that kind of shut everything <laughs> out, <doesn't laughs> it? It's turned you off. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. But I think the point was Maddie was awesome. Is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Follow her on Twitter. So, well, folks, should we wrap this up? Because <laughs> yeah, let's do it. We have we've been told <laughs> right, it's time. time. I remember it's one time. second. One second. All right, oh, hit it. Name three companies who do mobile incident response. Go ahead. Try. Um. <laughs> exactly. Wait a minute, wait. Do you mean mobile incident response? Like they'll come to your location and like you're talking grab the phone devices? and like look. I like name three companies who can so, do incident response on mobile. Yeah, so that's, that's oh, on sort of mobile device. I was making earlier yeah. was that you know, like, so I took the the Sans uh, smartphone forensics course uh, years ago, and I was the, really the only non law enforcement person in there. Right? It's just one of these things, like I was saying, that like it's just we're ignoring it as you know the 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 private sector information security you know Ce celebrate probably does it i guarantee you celebrate does it i i don't no. i don't think they, they, don't, they do they forensics don't. no they don't they, not. no they, 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 yeah i mean but hold on different. let's step back one sec what would forensic or like an incident response entail with a mobile device right so so that's the thing so with with so forensics and incident response have this symbiotic relationship right i mean if you're going to do some incident response you're also probably going to do some forensics and and, and vice versa sure. right so i think i think that if you're going to do mobile incident response first it depends on the type of platform and second um it's not nowhere near as easy or as free as it is to do on on um well, a, a well, computer, I, right you need specialized so wait, wait, gear and most wait to, no, to you don't. image well, for across the board, yeah. Or no, you don't. IPhone. Okay, how do no. you want to do my phone? Okay. Don't bother, why? Okay, so look. 
honestly, if you're doing mobile incident response, okay, your mobile device is merely a portal that gains access to a cloud service, right? So your email, your files, everything that you do on that device is actually attached to the cloud. So sure. we've actually done, quote, quote, mobile incident response, oh, yeah. where we have customers that are things. compromised, and we're going back to the cloud services. We're pulling off the logs off those cloud services, because if somebody breaks into someone's phone, more than likely – they're going to get access to the files and the things associated with it. And those logs exist in the cloud. So by and large, whenever you're talking mobile, uh, like incident response, usually mobile incident response is being done in conjunction with cloud incident response. Now, when you talk forensics on the phone, that's a horse of a completely different color. Um, so you said those are not in diagrams. They don't completely overlap much. And there's a lot of situations where you would end up doing mobile forensics illegal pornography cases would be an example where it doesn't sure. really fall in the category of incident response. But if you're talking but mobile incident response case, from a corporate perspective, it's going to be the same thing as cloud incident response. Sorry, go ahead. Rob. In the, no, 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 I was interrupting. So sorry. Um, so in no. this case, the, the exploits were popping shells on those boxes, uh, on those mobile devices, if they had them, yeah. right? So one of the things you would want to do in a mobile instant response is pull forensics so you can find the binaries that were doing the things, right? Not, they might, they're, uh, I used to oh, do, you're when I worked right. at, uh, like I'm telling you, you're both right because that, I, I'm with you, Rob, because I mean, it depends on how far, like what you want out, like what's the question of interest that you want to get to, to sure. answer, like um, what am I responding everything. to? Everything. I want to know everything. If you want to know everything about it, you're doing forensics, <laughs> you're making an image, and then that's when you get yep. to go to celebrate and, you know, spend $14,000 and buy, you know, the, It's the my turn. <laughs> Yeah, it's your turn now. But uh, well, hey, how about how about we set this up? I think that this would be a good <laughs> one this Wednesday, just out of curiosity. Yeah, because I you know, don't want to leave on this one. I think that this is really, really interesting because we should be talking about Celebrite and how Celebrite actually does hoard zero days uh, to basically get past authentication on devices. I think how many iOS about are there a year? A year, right? Yeah. <laughs> like so, to, to even image an iPhone, you're jailbreaking it. You're essentially exploiting it, right? I mean, that's yes, what you, have you to are do. absolutely. Right. So I got the ping to leave too. So we <laughs> <laughs> all heard it, dude. I, it is I just that signed. Time. I just signed something random for my wife, and I'm wondering, like, <laughs> did I, what did I just hand her over? Oh. All right, everybody, let's get out of here. We'll talk. Let's let's, let's set this up topic. Let's do a mobile uh, forensics and like. Pensting extravaganza next Wednesday. All right. I'll be there. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Okay, so, how do I hang up? You have to hover over a certain place to pull up the button. There it is.